<sighs> All right, everybody, I've been dreading this moment. It snowed this weekend, the roads have iced over, and thus begins the cycle of freeze and thaw here in Missoula. So that means putting on a studded fat tire on the front of the Otso. So I've removed the front wheel. I'm assuming that this is tubeless. So I'm probably gonna try to set this up tubeless as well. Got my sealant. I've got my uh, squirt bottle of sudsy water um, and paper towels. It's gonna get messy. Let's see if I can get this on in under an hour. That is my goal, to get this sucker on in under an hour. So first things first, let's get this guy off. Take the valve core off and speed up this whole process here. The last tubeless fat tire I tried to get off uh, was really, really tight. And I had to literally stand on the tire to, to remove it. Uh, let's see if I'll have to do that with this guy. Let's get on the ground. I know a bunch of you guys are gonna give me shit for this technique, but this is what I found worked. And that is uh, stepping on the tire using your weight to pop up the All right. Hey, they came off pretty easily. So just uh, body weight alone, I was able to pop that guy off. Oh. Hey, <clears throat> not too bad. So successfully broke off the bead on both sides. Oh. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but a lot of sealant in here. So that came off. Uh, surprisingly easy. So this is the fat tire I'm gonna mount. It's the 45 North Dillinger. Uh, I believe this is four, 4.6 inches, a crap ton of studs. Uh, meant to be set up tubeless, so that's what I'm gonna do. So this is the direction. Okay, so it popped on pretty easy, which uh, is both good and a bad thing. Typically, in my experience, when a tubeless tire goes on this easy, that means it's not gonna seal right. Hopefully, this will prove me wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna try to pull the beads out to the sides. Okay, so the uh, pump is all charged up. It's a little spray bottle with soapy water here. The theory behind using uh, soapy water is that it'll create a temporary seal. Um, if this goes on on the first time, this is gonna be a, a, a new record for me because usually it takes many attempts. Will this happen the very first time? Ready? No go on the first try. I may try it one more time. Okay. Okay, pump is all charged up. I kinda, uh, what I suspect that's happening is that there's just a little bit too much of a gap for this to seal. It's just what I thought. Uh, because this got on so easily, that means that there's just not enough, I think, there's too much room between the tape and the tire. So I'm gonna have to add uh, a couple rolls of tape. So, <sighs> let's pop the tire off and add some tape. So tire is off once again. I'm gonna swap out this uh, tape that's on here and replace it with some Gorilla Tape. Whoever tells you that tubeless tires are easy is lying to you, basically. <laughs> so the way I'm gonna lay this down is uh, twice, once with the tape on this edge and another, uh, another run with the tape right on that edge. All right, so it's flush on this side. Now to put another layer that, that's gonna rest on this uh, part of the rim. Okay, so I've got uh, tape that's going from uh, one side of the room to the other, covering up all the holes nice and smooth and tight. 
Time to punch a hole for the valve. Okay, time to put the tire back on. You'd think they'd make the directional signs a lot easier to find. Okay, it was the, the slightest bit harder to get on. Still went on pretty easy, so I'm still a little concerned that might not have a good enough, uh, might not be tight enough. And if that's the case, I might go, off, go around it with another layer of tape, but we'll start here. Uh, this is... Okay. Whew. Pump is charged. I'm gonna do the magic spray bottle. And I know some of you are wondering why I'm not putting sealant in yet. And uh, this is called dry mounting the tire, so mounting it without the sealant. And the reason I like to do this is because uh, if you mount it with the sealant and it's just not working, it's going to make a huge mess. So it's better to get a pretty good fit without the sealant first, if possible. I mean, the sealant might help in uh, making this happen a little bit easier. But in my experience, you know, you can put sealant in there and it just won't seal and you have to remove it with the sealant in there and mop it all up. So I prefer this method which is the dry mount method. Oh, okay, come on. You can do it. Come on. Oh! Did it! I did it! All right, it mounted. You can see uh, the soap suds, uh, we got it on. So now, time to uh, let out all the air, put in the sealant, and then reinflate it. Okay, got some stands, got the injector. I might give it uh, a healthy portion. Put the valve core back in, and theoretically this should hold because the bead is on. Let's see? Okay, I filled it up with a uh, up to 10 psi here. I'm gonna coat the inside of the tire. This is called the uh, driving the bus move. <laughs> You can really hear the, the sealant sloshing around. You do this too so it kind of bounces the, the sealant around different parts of the rim where it hits the, uh, the spoke nipples. Huh. Looks like I was uh, mostly successful. It took a, a couple tries but I made it happen. It only took like 35 minutes. <laughs> This is a new record for me. I hope you guys found this helpful if you're putting on a big fat tire tubeless at home, that this gave you some tips. <sighs> I'm exhausted from all the pumping. Uh, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, consider supporting the channel, and uh, watch for an update on how these Dillingers do in the snow and the ice. And as always, keep the supple side down. <laughs> <laughs>